Now to what doctors are calling a triple threat, flu, RSV, and COVID-19. With respiratory viruses spreading quickly and much earlier than in previous years, hospitals scrambling now to meet the onslaught of patients. And that, of course, is raising concerns about what the winter months may bring. So let's bring in now from the White House, the United States Surgeon General, Dr. Vivek Murthy. Doctor, good to have you with us uh, as always. I, I know you have to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time, but we're talking about flu, RSV, and COVID. Can you give us an idea, though, which which one of these is kind of your leading concern given what we're seeing in hospitals? Well, it's so good to be with all of you again. Look, I think we have to be cognizant that all three, COVID, RSV, and the flu, uh, are threats that we have to be mindful of. And the good news is that we are not powerless in the face of these viruses. There is something we can do to help prevent our kids and adults from getting these. Uh, and, and this is, you know, the very personal for me, too. My two small kids uh, who are four and six, They've both been sick uh, this winter with various viruses. I was in the uh, emergency room myself with my daughter who was ill a couple of weeks ago. So I know how this feels for parents who are scared and worried out there. With COVID and the flu, the good news is we have vaccines available. And the most important job of these vaccines is to save your life and keep you out of the hospital. And by that measure, they're working well. So I would urge parents to please get your children and get yourself vaccinated uh, for COVID and the flu. You can do that at the same time, by the way. For RSV, it turns out that that virus spreads similar to other viruses, and taking measures like staying home if you're sick, avoiding contact with those who are sick, uh, making sure you're washing your hands regularly, uh, these can all help us uh, with reducing the spread of the virus. And let's keep this in mind because it's more important than ever, especially as hospitals are filling up, children's hospitals in particular, that we take these measures because they're one way that we can take care of our kids, but also relieve the strain on healthcare workers. Hey, Dr. Murtha, I hope you don't mind us asking though, but you mentioned your kids. Are the little ones okay? Oh, well, thank you so much for asking. Yes, thankfully, we were uh, blessed to be able to, to get good care for my daughter. Their doctors and nurses took great care of her, and she was in the hospital for about, you know, the better part of a day, but it was able to come home, and she's much better now. Oh. Thank you. And Vivek, it's Jen. Uh, nice to talk to you again. I want to stay Hi. on RSV for a second, because as you know, there are some hospitals in certain parts of the country that are at or approaching 100% capacity uh, for their pediatric beds, even though uh, elderly people are also affected by RSV. What in particular is being done at, at the hospital level to help them with uh, resources that they need? We have been cognizant of this and working very closely with healthcare systems, with the medical associations, and with states and local jurisdictions directly. And we're doing several things. Number one, we're offering them direct support uh, when they need it in terms of personnel, ventilators, equipment. Uh, we are also working closely with them to coordinate so that across a given region or a state, uh, beds can be utilized and the, at the most efficiently so that even if one hospital doesn't have beds, they can work with other institutions and may have space uh, you know, in their region. And and we're staying closely aligned with them to provide additional trainings and support as needed. So we're all in this together. We're going to stay working closely with these institutions to make sure they have the resources they need. But keep in mind that if you want to help the hospital systems, one of the most important things you can do is to get vaccinated for COVID and flu, to reach for Paxlovid, which is a meditation to treat COVID-19 if you're in a high-risk group. These are some of the best ways to keep people out of the hospital, and our hospitals need all the support that they can get right now. Dr. Murthy, I want to talk about influenza now. According to the CDC, two-thirds of states here in this country are reporting high or very high levels of influenza-like activity. Talk about why we're seeing these high numbers so early and what your concerns are heading into the winter months. Hmm. So it's a good question. The last couple of years have been very unusual for flu and RSV. You know, during the early years of COVID, when people were isolated, taking precautions, including wearing masks, the bottom line is, you know, we, we can't let up our, our guard. We have to take the precautions that we need to prevent the spread of these viruses, like washing our hands, like wearing masks in, in crowded indoor spaces, and like making sure that we're staying home if, if we're sick. And of course, again, with COVID and flu, please get vaccinated as soon as you can. Uh, Winter is here. Cases are high and we want people to be protected. And what's your prediction right now, a potential COVID surge uh, this winter, given what you're seeing right now? Well, I think we have to be prepared for the fact that we will see a rise in COVID cases. We're in some parts of the country, we're already seeing uh, cases start to go up. But I do think that we will be in a better place than we were in the last two winters when we had surges. And the reason I think we'll be in a better place is that we have uh, more people who have protection, either from vaccinations or from 
uh, from prior infection. We also have medications like Paxlovid to treat those who are in high risk uh, groups, like the elderly. Uh, so the bottom line is I do think we'll be in a better position, but we need people to use these tools. And uh, one thing that's worth underscoring is if people are up to date with their vaccines, if they've gotten especially the updated uh, COVID-19 booster vaccine, which if you've been gotten your last shot two months or out, you're not eligible to get. If you're updated with your vaccines and if you reach for Paxlovid, uh, you know, if you are in fact in a high risk group and get sick, your chances of dying from COVID are really, really low. And so right now we're losing between 300 to 400 people a day uh, to COVID-19. The most, most of those uh, deaths are actually preventable if you're up to date with your vaccines, if you reach for medications like Paxilid if you do get sick. And we want people to know about that so they can be safe. All right, well, the U.S. Surgeon General often called the nation's top doctor, but I'm sorry we take, we take issue with that because we, we like the doctor we have on set with us here a lot too, uh, Dr. Murphy. But we, uh, we appreciate your time as always, and we'll see you again. Thanks so much. Well, thank you so much. Good to be with you today. That was just for you, Dr. Ashton. <laughs> thank you. Uh, you know, uh, he is the first Surgeon General in U.S. history to serve two terms. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I did not Historic. realize that. You should have congratulated him for that. Yes. <laughs> Missed opportunity. Uh -huh. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.